if I were to describe an animal that sleeps all day and incredibly active at night, you would probably assume it's one of my monsters, but it's not. Now, I never thought that I would literally change my sleeping patterns and sleeping schedule for a fish. Well, not your typical fish, but a fish. It goes in a fish tank. It's 4.30 in the morning. And I realized this is when my octopus, <laughs> this is when my pet octopus likes to eat. Just gotta kinda put it up to its tentacles. And grab it, pull it in. Isn't that awesome? Good morning. Up first thing in the morning to feed my pet octopus and to tell you this story and to finally answer most of you of what happened to your octopus. And the story that I'm going to tell you is likely not what you were expecting. Let me recap first. I've been wanting to keep octopus for a long time and for obvious reasons. This is an incredibly interesting animal, highly intelligent, and it would just be absolutely just captivating. And they truly are, but we'll get to that in a second. I decided I would build them custom aquariums that were octopus proof. Or should I say I consciously built these aquariums knowing that an octopus could potentially escape and I need to act on that before an octopus can actually go in the aquarium. If their beak can get through it, their whole body can get through it. The beak is an interesting thing as well because it's the only way you can tell the age of some species of octopus and you do it post-mortem, of course, uh, in order to measure it and or I believe you might even be able to see, and I haven't looked into this because I'm not interested in dissecting an octopus, but I believe it's almost like a tree rings where you can count rings or something like that on the beak. Maybe somebody in the comments will know uh, specifically, but the downside to that is you never know how old the octopus actually is. And because of that, it's kind of a sad story because these species of, or most, most species of octopus only live for one to two years and they might already be halfway through or they might even be in their dying phase. So when I got these guys and I added them to the aquariums, I added them into these little boxes. The first thing I need to do is make sure they would uh, survive the acclimation. They came from a very long shipment over 24 hours, if I remember correctly. And upon adding them to their uh, containers, they were active and moving around. So I had hope. 24 hours later, I released them to, it was 24, 48 hours. This was a couple months ago, by the way. A, a lot of the stuff that I show you on super advanced things, I make sure that uh, it's presented in a responsible way as opposed to just jumping on video and look what I got, look what I got. I know it appears that way, but I've had these guys for a couple months and you only seen these videos a couple weeks ago or a week ago or something like that. They made it through the first couple of days and they were still alive. They were hiding. And when an octopus hides, especially this species, which is the Atlantic white spot, which is a true nocturnal species. And I should say that I was gonna go with a common octopus, which is technically considered a daytime octopus, which means it will be out and about all day long. It will interact with you. It, it will interact with its environment and you can play with it type of thing. But I thought something a little more advanced would be far more fascinating and interesting. And, in, and it would take me away and every, all of you guys away from glorifying octopus keeping and focusing more so on their needs and responsibilities that you have as their caretaker, which this video is going to highlight beautifully. I added in um, live crabs into their tanks and I'm not a huge fan of feeding live, but in order to get an animal to eat, especially once you first get it, one of the keys to survival is making sure that it actually eats. And a lot of times when you have a wild octopus, they don't know what pellets are or, you know, maybe they'll eat them, but I tried uh, crabs. And those crabs were still in the tanks uh, two or three days later. I decided maybe they can't find them. Maybe they're just too scared. Maybe they're hiding. Uh, it could maybe be a lot of things, but I couldn't tell if the octopus were even alive because they were constantly hiding. So I did remove almost everything from their aquariums, including the shark eggs from this one, and they went in the sump at the time. And the tower came out. The tower had to come out because it weighs about 80 pounds. Uh, and it was on a pile of rocks. Now it's down to one rock and uh, a cave system, but in order to get them to eat, uh, in order to monitor them, in order to have a closer look, I felt like this was the needed. And this species of octopus will hide in the sand. It technically doesn't need much more than sand. As soon as I did that, they ate. I did have to coax the little one to eat as well. 
Like I said, the downside to these guys is they are a larger species. Their mantle, which is their heads, gets to up to about the size of a children's football, which is about eight inches. And then their tentacles can grow up to another three or four feet long. This is a medium sized uh, species of octopus, probably considered small in the ocean, but in, in terms of aquarium keeping, heck, I would even call it large. I can't feed these guys live crabs forever, but I was elated to know that they are eating. I immediately switched them and started trying to feed them fresh foods, live foods they would eat even with the lights on. So it's like, okay, may, it is a nocturnal species, but when you're hungry, you're hungry. It doesn't matter what time it is. Heck, I wake up at two o'clock in the morning and want a hamburger sometimes. Maybe these guys will do the same. That's not what happened. They wouldn't eat. This guy was supposed to be for a friend and I almost gave it to him, uh, gave her to him who has a really large reef tank that is super excited about it. I'm a, it. I was supposed to get it nice and healthy, get it eating, and then give it to him. I think that's, that's the responsible thing to do. But then it stopped eating completely, just drawing out the time. I decided I'm gonna have to start feeding these guys in the middle of the night. I thought, let's do an experiment. I'll wake up at 4.30 in the morning and see if they'll eat. Lo and behold, they started eating. But I cannot wake up at 4.30 in the morning every day. I thought, let's trick them. 4.30 today, five o'clock the next day, 5.30 the next day, and slowly progressively get to a reasonable time, hoping to get them to 7 a.m. It worked. I got them eating at 7 a.m., but one day uh, I didn't get out here in time until I think it was about nine o'clock, and the big one ate, but the little one didn't. And then it didn't eat the next day, and the next day, and I realized I have to restart the cycle. I have to go back to 4.30. What happened at about 4.30? It ate! For almost two months now, I've been doing this. I've got them to the point now where they'll eat at around seven, eight, nine o'clock in the morning, no problem. But I put in so much time, <laughs> and I'm not complaining, because here, here's one of the things that I like. I know I gotta get up at 4.30 in the morning, so it helps me get to sleep a little earlier at night, knowing I've gotta be a responsible father to my octopi babies. Uh, so I've got to make sure that I go not only to bed, but I look forward to getting up at 4.30 sometimes because I come out here and it's just so serene. Everybody's quiet, everybody's... Uh, and I'm having such an intimate experience with these guys and knowing that I'm... I'm a father of two children and I remember what it's like to get up in the morning and at uh, first, you know, in the middle of the night and bottle feed and that intimate moment. And it, it, silly as it sounds, it's a very similar experience. It's to the point where I don't want to give up either one of them. I want to keep them both. I feel like so attached to them, especially the big one who I feel like we've, <laughs> this is so weird. We've connected and we know each other and, we, and she trusts me. I don't trust her. Why don't I trust her and why do I feed with tongs? The little one discovered that I taste delicious. Uh, I first tried it on my friends to see if it would bite them. I'm like, yeah, just put your hand in. I tried it with Tamara as well. Just go ahead and pet them and put your hand in and they just bite them and they, she draws blood. So I tried it and I was like, okay, I'm one with the animals. I will try it. No, she bit me too. I'm not trying it with Big Mama. It doesn't technically have a name and that's the first time I called her Big Mama. So that's not going to be her. Is Big Mama her name now? So I'm not gonna try it with Big Mama. <laughs> Big Mama. It's just so fascinating the way they eat though and you offer them a piece of food they feel it with their tentacles and that's really all you have to do you just have to brush it up against their tentacles and they feel it immediately they know it's food they grab onto it and then the rest of their body immediately latches onto it and they have this webbing in between their legs that's right under the mantle and they bring it up into there and they they kind of just walk off with their food and become little mush balls and turn almost white camouflaging with the sand i'm thinking about putting in darker sand in one of these tanks and seeing if they color contrast or not. However, with that said, my friend knows that the octopus was for them. They showed a tremendous amount of interest and excitement over the sharks. And I thought, you know, I personally wanted to do this again. I personally wanted to keep sharks, grow them out, hatch them and all of that sort of thing. Uh, and even though we did it before, we weren't able to get them past, you know, a, a few weeks past hatching, although we did get them eating and and that sort of thing. And it was such a fascinating and exciting experience. So what I've decided to do is uh, for the time being, he's gonna, t he's going to take the sharks, the shark eggs, and he's going to have fun with them and experience that side of things. Uh, likely take footage for me, doesn't wanna be on camera. Uh, and I'll be able to share it with you guys here eventually. Um, as for the octopus, he does have another, <laughs> he still thinks it's his and uh, and I'm just gonna add this in real quick. I never planned for 
the little girl to have problems with feeding or anything like that, but I put myself in a bit of a predicament. Supposed to have one octopus here and the sharks there. Uh, but I also don't want to hand over an octopus that's frail, but the sharks also can't stay in that tank and there's nowhere else for them to go. Things just technically didn't go to plan um, it wasn't my intention to end up with just two octopus, but, and I know some people would be disappointed about the shark eggs and whatnot. Uh, and you know, I am as well, but when the camera shuts off, it doesn't, my fish don't care how many subscribers or how many views we get. Uh, and as ungrateful as that sounds, which I'm, I'm totally not, it, it's really t difficult to be a hobbyist and a YouTuber at the same time and to make decisions and to just justify everything and to show everything, etc. cetera. Um, but I think you guys get it. I think you guys are mature enough to know that, you know, uh, not everything goes to plan all the time. So what are the real plans for the future? I mean, obviously, first and foremost, keep these guys eating, keep them healthy, do whatever it takes. I, I do plan to keep this, uh, <laughs> I do plan to keep Big Mama in this aquarium until she, I don't think she's going to outgrow it. Even though it's a larger species based on their activity and whatnot, I just can't see her outgrowing it. I do plan to put the, um, the tower back in shortly, maybe in a couple of weeks or something. I do want her to put on some size. They do have to eat every day, sometimes twice a day. These uh, octopus, if you don't know, a lot of the species can eat up to 4% of their body weight every single day. And 4%, 2% of that goes to their uh, growth, they grow 2% a day, which is crazy. 50, in two months, they double in size or triple in size. So I'm excited about that. I guess that's it. There's not enough else to say. I mean, I, I feed them in the middle of the night and now I get to feed them during the day and that's it. Most of the days they hide. They do grace me with beauty and it's very special every once in a while where they will come out and explore. Can you even see it? Like, that's what I'm saying. You see her right there? And she will come out. Go have a closer look. This one hides under this rock behind it, so that's been fun. There she is, big mama. Now her mantle, she controls how big it is, but sometimes she makes it really, really big. Her mantle right now is about the size of a large thumb. She's definitely a foot long. Uh, it just doesn't seem that way. I, I use a wide angle lens for the most part when I film and it's tough to gauge size of these animals. Just absolutely fascinating. Her house is under this rock, but she also likes to eat in here. And sometimes she'll go up into the overflow behind it and stuff herself behind it if she wants to hide. Um, look at the substrate, how it's kind of clumped up. That only happened once she was in there. I wonder if that's like octopus pee and it's like kitty litter to them. What, has anybody ever seen that before, clumping like that? Anyways, she's doing fantastic. I can't wait to experience more. See, her, her mantle's already getting bigger. I can't wait to experience more of this with you guys. Just be warned. Um, these are an incredibly advanced animal, uh, and I proceed with caution if you do decide to get one.